This is our time. Come back to the place of learning. Come back to the dojo. My name is Eddie Gray. I'm your host, and I'm ready to crush it. I want to get into this amazing piece of engineering. The more I read this, the, the, the more I realize I don't know very much about this program. And look, there are a lot of things I don't know about, but here's one thing I do know, results. I know how to move the ball forward, and I've helped other people do the same. So I want you to make sure that you keep stepping one foot in front of the other. Right? Even if you don't understand everything yet, what do you understand? What can we grasp today? Even if you don't get the full picture, let's get half the picture. Right? Just stay in action, and you will get what you need. I am eager to start. If you have questions, I'll check the chat. The halfway point, I, I would like questions particularly pertinent to the subject at hand. And if you have other questions, videos you'd like to see, impersonations that you want me to, just kidding, uh, support at hfmusicacademy.com. We'll get you there. All right. And then just before I start, uh, we are currently live and on the Apple community. Please join us. I just made a YouTube video about this. I'm helping people from all over the world solve a ton of queries and want to make sure that that if you need help, you, you don't feel like you're alone. See, that's one of the mistakes that I made early on was I thought I had to do everything myself. So something as easy as learning how to bounce out a project will take me, you know, two hours, three hours, four hours, 16 hours. You don't have to go through the trouble. There are willing and able professionals that are willing to help you out. Now, when they do answer you, it's very important that you accredit them properly. And if they have been helpful, let them know and address that. And if they have solved your inquiry, again, let them know and let it be known. Okay. All right. We're going to get into it. Let's just, let's just go work in the cell editor in logic pro. Very happy to be here as always. I'm looking at the channel every single day. It's just, it's just getting better. And I, I really have you to think there really is no other reason, right? I don't do any outside promotions outside of this. And so I realize that this is getting around. The good word is getting around. And so thank you for sharing the information and just thank you for hitting the thumbs up, right? Thank you very much. All right, let's go. Work in the cell editor logic pro. You can use the cell editor to view and edit the regions and cells similar to the way you edit regions in the piano roll editor for MIDI or software instrument track, audio track editor, and the drummer editor, and of course, the new step sequencer. You can graphically change loop settings for audio and MIDI cells. So we can change not only what the loop looks like, but of course, what it sounds like. Audio and MIDI cells can contain multiple regions, okay? We're always talking about the language on this channel, and they're letting you know that both audio and MIDI, not drummer, okay, and not the pattern format, but both audio and MIDI can contain multiple regions, so you can add regions to cells and edit them in the cell editor. All right. You can also edit smart tempo, transient markers, flex audio, and region automation for individual cells. Now, if we want to open what they call the cell editor. We would need to double click the cell itself. We can also make sure cell is in key focus and hit the key command E. And lastly, while a cell is in key focus, we go up to the view menu in the local menu bar, I'll show you in a second, and then you go to show editor. Cell editor is gonna open, okay? Audio cells are gonna show audio waveforms, obviously, and MIDI cells are gonna show the piano roll interface. Now, d please don't confuse this with an external MIDI track. Two different things for beginners. I like to ask them to, to cordially not think about external MIDI at all until you get the, you know, the, the, the foundation and the basis of the program. The drummer cells show the drummer editor controls, as you would expect. And finally, pattern cells show the step sequencer. So if we want to start to create some edits, again, you would either double-click Right. I can also just click on the cell in question, hit P like Paul. That's something they did not uh, mention there. And let's see. Also here, audio waveform. 
key command E if we're looking at the cell editor for audio. Okay. Another thing, we can also go to view. Okay. And then from view, show cell editor. Keep cells. How come I don't see it? Uh, oh, that's because nothing is in key focus. Hang on. Okay, this isn't, uh, wait. <laughs> you have to click on the top of the cell in order to select it. I believe if you click at the very bottom, it should work as well. I could be wrong about that. Let's see if this is true. Yes. Okay, so let's go to view and show start position. Mm, is this, hold on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It says here, select the cell, choose view, show editor. Okay, selecting a cell, selecting view. I do not see show editor, but I, I, I don't, maybe up here. Okay, oh, that's a lot. I would not do it that way. That just takes too long. Of course, this is only my opinion, right? I'm not right. I just have my own way of doing things. I feel called to teach, to inspire and help others as they learn the program and navigate their careers. And so don't take what I say uh, as truth. In fact, there may be plenty of uh, gaps and, and things of that nature, and that's okay, right? S listen to my mixes, look at what I've done, and that right there will be the true north. Okay, let's keep going. Changing the loop setting. So again, we, we've addressed this. What I'm looking for right now is, is anything that wasn't previously mentioned. Okay, so we know there's a start marker, and we know that the start marker does not necessarily have to begin at bar one. All right, we also have the end marker, and I've taught you in the last video, I've taught you how to change these view settings so they, they're a little bit easier to decipher. So you're gonna wanna go into the view menu to check that out. I won't go through it now, but I just wanna make sure you understand. You go to view, show start positions as offset, and you can change the position and length resolutions. Play with this and see what works for you. Okay, so because we have done this already, I'm not gonna spend time. Um, something I do wanna point out, it, it almost looks like there's two rulers, doesn't it? At the very top, this is not the official term, but this is the loop ruler, right? And then at the bottom, you have the start and the end marker of the region itself. So how we want to break this down, pretty simple. We have the region, and the region has a start and an end marker, of course. Now, within that region, because we are in the live loops grid, my good friends, we can loop how we deem fit. So the track can start at bar one and can play to the very end and then just you know play over and over again or we can be a little bit more creative and again i'm going to give you some some direct examples because i do believe the last time we weren't really showing deep examples we were just going through some of the protocol so again we'll start at bar one and then we'll start to loop at bar two so let's do that now okay so I'm going to do this with my lead. So let me uh, let me play this out so you get a sense of what we're working with. Here we go. All right, something is conflicting here. It's like a guitar or something. What is it? Is it this? I think it's this. Could be that. Let me let me play this from the top just to make sure. I'm using my arrow keys here. All right, so I'll go all the way up. And then my focus is around the congas, track 25 or track number two. All right, let's add those acoustic guitars. Actually, those are what's conflicting. Yeah, we'll go with the bass. All right, so we got the groove going here, right? All right, we're feeling good. And now what we're gonna do 
is we're going to change the loop position of this specific live loops grid here. You gotta love it, right? The very best information on live loops on YouTube today, guaranteed. All right, so I'm gonna double click on this. All right, so we're gonna keep playing the track. I will bring down the volume just a bit here. Okay, so let's go ahead, click the background of the piano roll, hit Z. Now I have a much more objective view, right? Bird's eye view. Okay, so as mentioned, it looks like we have two rulers or cycle regions, but of course, one of them is just looping the whole thing, the one at the very top, lighter shade. The one at the bottom determines the start and end marker, right? Where the region begins and of course where it ends. So I'm gonna let this keep doing its thing. I do want it to start at bar one, but here's where this differs. I want it to start looping in a, in a different way, something trippy at bar two. So when I start this over, what's gonna happen my good friends is that the playback will start at bar one it will commence to move forward past bar two, but when it gets to bar three, because we have the loop region enabled, it will go back to bar two and it will start to repeat over and over and over and over again until either A, we stop all cells, okay? Or we stop the individual cell from performing and trigger another one to take its place. Or of course we could just have it be silent. All right. Let's give it a go. Oh wait, that's cool, but you're not hearing the subtleties and I, I want to play this a little bit more stripped down. So uh, multiple ways of doing this. I, let me show you with the arrow keys. I'm selecting this particular cell right now. I'll hold shift and I'm starting to create an aggregate selection. All of these now are in key focus. I can hit option, is it option P or T? Hmm. All right. I'm gonna have to look. Yeah. Option return. Here we go. All right. So now this is queued and ready to go. Now it, it's not playing yet because it needs some kind of sign, right? It's, tr it's queued. It's ready to play, but until you tell it to play or I stop the playback and then replay, then it will play. So in this case, I'm going to stop the playback and then I'll hit spacebar, and we should be going, we should be good to go. Also, you see how he keeps playing bar two to three? Let me re-trigger the entire scene, and then this whole process will start over. It will start at bar one and then begin looping. Here we go. Ah. Yeah, I don't want to hear the whole song. That's the thing. So I need to turn off a couple of things. Let me do this and just mute all this because I really want you to hear the part, understand what's going on here. All right, from the top, uh, I believe if I just hit option return, I cue the cell, and then if I hit. All right, good, so that's ready to go. Let's go from the top, return. Okay, wait, but that's just playing the one. I want the whole thing, and so the, the cell has to be in focus. I think this should do it. All right, so now that 
makes a lot more sense. Everything is clear. So long as you understand how to navigate the workspace, it should be fairly comprehensible. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, but I think you can get around it. Just keep practicing the fundamentals. In this case, stop all grids button. Make sure you understand how to trigger a cell as separate from a scene and learn the value of queuing a cell or scene. All right. So again, there is, uh, oh, actually there's one new thing here. This is valuable. So if you want the ruler to start, let's say a bar two, if you control click the ruler where you want the start position to be and choose set start position, I, I like that a lot. So uh, worth our time, let me double click here again. And so then I'll tell logic, hey, right here, this is where I want my start position. Oh, this is sweet. Yes, please. I love it. Because I don't know, I don't know for you, but for me, it's, it's kind of cumbersome, you know, having to grab the loop cycle and the start and end markers. Cell inspector is okay. Uh, but I needed something else. And so I really like this. Let me set the the end mark to um, I guess right here. Let's just change it up. Let's make something short. So set loop end or or set yeah press reset no 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 i don't want to reset i'm going to set loop end here okay so let's trigger this and see what it sounds like cool so you see how what we're doing here and then here's the magic though okay pay attention here when we grab this cell and i hold option and i drag it over i'm going to play this scene but for kicks, I'm going to trigger this one and I'm going to go back and forth to create, you know, just a, a bit of a jam feeling. So um, here, I'll tell you what, let's uh, let's use this menu since we just learned how to use it. it says move loop forward by loop length. And that would be shift command period. OK, actually, that's not bad. Let's do that. All right. So from the top, here we go. Very cool. So you notice that I was playing cells that were adjacent to track 29, right? These are all part of the same sequence, if you will. I know they sounded a little bit different um, and there's no right or wrong way, but especially for my beginners, I really want you to take your time. And if you're going to use one instrument, let that be the the instrument that dictates the rest of the performances. Like, in other words, don't change, you know, like from a snare to like uh, an accordion or something like keep it all in the drum family, especially in the snare family. So you can really navigate the workspace and have, have control and have clarity. We're, we're all after it. And so there's, there's ways to attain it. There's, uh, there's ways to increase your chances of having a great experience, right? Workflow start to adopt healthy habits now and you can ultimately develop a very very efficient workflow very good let's uh keep on going here we now understand how to change the loop settings this only pertains to audio and midi we didn't make that clear already my good friends what else do we have here we can move the loop start position right i, we, I showed you the contextual menu uh, move the loop end position, all good, all easy stuff, right? But you got to try it. It can be easy, but if you don't try it, you're just not going to remember. You have to try it. You have to record it into your memory. Move the loop area. I showed you the key command. Let's go. Edit smart tempo and transients for audio cells. So we can actually do a little bit more mechanical work inside of the audio cells. How do we do this? Well, of course we would double click, right? Enter the cell editor. If the cell contains multiple regions, click the audio waveform to select the region you want it. So we click the audio waveform that we want to edit, right? If there's multiple MIDI regions or audio regions, you're going to have to select the one that you want to edit. Then you go to smart tempo, Edit smart tempo from the cell editor menu bar. Then if you want, 
you can edit transients and what have you. All right, let's look into it. Uh, I have some audio, let's see, right here, this guitar. I think I did a guitar last time. Let's see if I have anything more interesting. Uh, I do not. All right, guitar it is. So we double click. All right, fantastic. How do we edit this, right? So if I click on the region itself, that's awesome, but I still need some more information. So how do I get to the next place? Okay, good. I choose to edit some more tempo, choose edit, edit some more tempo. Okay, so we go to this menu item on the left, and we're going to edit smart tempo. That's pretty cool. Never even knew that was there. Love it. All right. So then now this shows us an enclosed feature. Um, it would be nice if all the tabs were here, but I would imagine they didn't want to over complicate this. So um, this doesn't look any different to me. Uh, this doesn't look like smart tempo at all. In fact, What's the difference? Um, all right, I'll, I'll try it again. Okay, Apple Loops contain tempo. Oh, okay, Roger that. All right, we're using an Apple Loop, so here's a bit of a hack for you. If you ever get caught up in this kind of dilemma, go ahead and bounce this to Audio Control B. Okay, and that should that should handle that, from what I remember. Uh, okay, cool. So then now theoretically this is not not an Apple Loop. So I will go to View. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Click on the region, then go to edit. Uh, oh, edit smart tempo. Okay, now we're talking. Wow, that was too many steps. But still, it's good to know. So here we are. And we know this is working because the BPM of the project is at 90. And the BPM of the actual cell inside of the smart tempo editor is also at 90. So that's good. We can actually change playback if we wanted to. We can make this, you know, halftime. So, you know, you can see that now it's half of its size. Let's listen back to this with the click on. Here we go. I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, let me command Z it. Now we're back, right? Non-destructive audio. So that's pretty sweet. Um... We can also detect the transients, but I, I actually kind of want to go into the smart tempo editor. So let's see if we can kind of dig around in there a little bit. So let's go down. When would you use this menu when you're trying to work with time and really get this to to work? Uh, let me go back up to 90. Okay, good. Looks like there's constant variable. All right, if we wanted to detect the transients, we would do that in here. All right, so why is this useful? Well, let's say you have a region and it's not perfectly matching up. Well, you'll notice that the tempo will differ from your project tempo inside of the cell editor in Smart Tempo. So that's one reason why you would want to do this. Um, if the timing is not working out, right, this is kind of like the, uh, what do they call it in Ableton, warped? I think it's warped editing or something where you can you can play with the audio a little bit more, right? This gives you that flexibility. So if you want to set the downhead to, I'm sorry, the downbeat to the playhead position, we can do that. But let's go ahead and align the uh, downbeat to the nearest cell downbeat. And so it's already done that, right? And there's more functionality here with these, these markers. Okay, let's see if we can look at the other menu item. So again, select the region. Let's go to edit transients. All right, cool. So if for whatever reason you wanted these to be reanalyzed, you can do that. Hopefully we can read more about this later and get some real uh, user cases. I know there are, there are some interesting things you can do them just i'm gonna just poke around here see if i could find them nope nope so yeah i guess the question is why would you do this i would assume 
so that when you drag it into another session, it can detect its transients, but hmm, doesn't seem convincing enough. Uh, if you want less, more transients, you can add them here. Uh, but yeah, I need, I need some more info on why you would want this and when you would want this. Um, looks like you can change those around if you wanted to. Cool. Let's get some more info on the manual. Show automation curves for a cell. You can view automation curves for region and cells in the cell editor. So we also have automation within the cells. Automation for cells in a similar to reg uh, automation. Let me pull back a little bit. Automation. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, right here. Automation for cells is similar to region automation. Okay, so when you are performing automation inside of the live loops grid, you are essentially creating region automation. So just want to be clear about that. That's an important point to make so that you don't get lost in some of its behavior is you're burning it into the cell itself, so to speak. Each region within a cell can have its own set of automation curves. Okay, so if we have five regions in one cell, each one can have its own volume being dictated separately from the other, right? Panning, uh, any, any automation parameter. Each region within a cell can have its own set of automation curves. When a cell contains automation curves, this symbol shows up. So that's what we want to be clear about. If you have automation, that is going to show up. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, add some add some stuff. So in the case of my synth here, I'm going to add, let's just do some volume. Let's keep it simple. So I'm going to hit Command Return. That's going to stop all cell playback. I'll click on that specific MIDI region, and then I will hit P. Okay, well, let me reset this. And so after that, I'll hit A. Okay, so theoretically, I'm inside of region automation, but I need to change the automation parameter. Okay, so I'll change that over to volume. Okay, now we can do this in this window. Okay, I'm wondering if we could do it up here. I'll hit the key command A. All right, so it looks like I can do it. But of course, when you try and do something, it's not going to happen because this cell is a region. Now, if we start talking about the tracks area, automation can be performed here. It can exist here. That's fine. But you won't be able to pull it off inside of the live loops grid, in which case we have to revert this to region automation. And so I will change this to volume. Hold on. Ah, uh, one second. Thing is going slow. Boom. All right, cool. All right. So again, I'm trying to perform. Yeah, you can't do it here. There is another feature that's kind of a workaround. We're not going to use it now, but let's go ahead and perform some volume automation here. So um, I'll just use the pencil tool just to kind of make this you know, a little messy. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. All right. So again, I hit the key command a seeing nothing in the tracks area. Now, if I zoom in nice and tight, my good friends, what do we see on the bottom, right? The automation sign. So that's an indicator that could be a little bigger. I'm just throwing that out there. But anyhow, very good. All right, let's talk about bouncing live loops and then we will call it. Uh, I do want to finish up this mix. And uh, yeah, it's uh, been a wild ride, my good friends. Let's, uh, let's get one more chapter in. Here we go. Or sub chapter in. Bounce live loop cells in Logic Pro. All right, so we know we can bounce audio MIDI pattern drummer. Okay, if you bounce a cell that has different start and loop positions, the resulting bounce consists of a pass from the start position of the loop end position and a pass from the loop start position to the loop end position. If the cell looping is turned off, the bounce range extends from the start position to the end. Okay, 
So that's interesting. You can choose to include an extra bounce of the loop range in the bounce cell. Hold on. This is important, right? They're, they're giving you the keys to the kingdom. Pay attention. This is particularly useful if you want to ensure that any instrument release or effects tails delays, right? Sometimes you have some delay at the end of a phrase. You want to make sure it transitions into the next passage. At the end of the source cells loop range will be an audible effect at the start of the bounce uh, cells loop region. So if you ever have an effect at the end of the phrase, go ahead and enable bounce second cycle only. Okay, because what's going to happen here is logic will go through its usual protocol. By the time it gets through the first quote unquote bounce, it will actually begin bouncing the track so that you can capture the effects. Beautiful. So we're going to uh, try this out. All right, just so we can show you who cares about reading this thing if we can't show you. Um, there's this this user guide is so robust. I mean, it so many features. Uh, we've done our best here at resources for the modern creative to tackle it. And uh, it's been just, just such a wonderful ride. I mean, there's so many new concepts, new new ways of thinking about the program. And I'm so excited about sharing my curriculum, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, some of you know I sold and created a Logic Pro curriculum for LearnQuest, who is an Apple training provider. And I will be providing some of those resources for free for all the individuals that are subbed on this channel. So if you're interested in that content, go ahead and sub. Hit that notification bell just to show your support. If, if you want, you can you can always change your mind later. But we really do appreciate you guys. Right, We do this for you. It's the only reason my team and I, we meet every week, and it's always the same conversation. How can we help? What else can we do? Right? And it always comes back to we got to give people the best information that we can when we can. Um, we understand that life will not always be like this. We, we will not always have this window of opportunity. And so we're making the most of our time now. Right? I'm not going to wait for it. We're going to get something from it. So when we get out of the gates and when it's our time to get back out, we just absolutely dominate because we're, we've prepared, right? We stayed ready. We didn't wait for anybody and we kept learning. We kept growing. We kept our frequency high. All right. So let's go ahead and give this a go. And uh, is there anything else? No, this is all stuff you guys already know. We've gone over this from time to time. I do like to read the note at the bottom. When you click OK, settings you have chosen are recalled the next time you access bounce cells in place. All right. So that's pretty cool. Right, I, I'll take that. Um, let me go ahead and just save this one second. Okay. All right. So let me throw on like a ridiculous amount of reverb on here. And why don't we throw one of the? Let me throw on. Um, let's do two things here. Let's do. Wow, this is going slow. Let me just do Chrome over. I need something very light with my CPU. Um, actually, I already have it on here. Let me just open up. Okay. All right. This right here is Mixbox, my favorite new plugin. I'm about to make some new content on this thing. I believe it's the only plugin that anybody will ever need, especially beginners. It has everything you need. One price, no subscription. It's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, go ahead and check this out. All right. So, Let's go ahead and find something that feels good with this synthesizer part. So I'm going to hit V to hide the GUI. Command return to stop all cell playback. And I will click on this one cell, make sure it's in key focus, and I will hit return. And then we're looking to just create some pretty wild avant-garde delay here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so two things are happening. I don't know if you guys caught that, but um, I know this sounds a little insane, but I want you to hear. It. So look at all this volume automation that's been written into the MIDI loop. Pretty cool, right? So I want to delete this though, right? It's not serving uh, its purpose at the at this juncture. So let's see if I can delete it from here. Mix, delete automation. I don't know if you can. I really don't. Let me see. Delete visible automation. No. It, it this that only pertains to the tracks area. See, these are things that you're not going to get in the user guide, which is important to note. 
All right. So in this case, I'm going to come down here and I uh, wish there was a way to select it all at once. Maybe there is and I just don't know. Oh, OK. I have some for you guys. See, so what happens when you're on six days a week, you know, staying committed to the process, you, you start picking up a couple things. So, look, I'm going to select that one automation node right there. And then when I hit the key command shift F. It will select all the following, in which case I will delete everything, and we are back to square one. All right, so I've created a pretty ridiculous sounding MIDI thing. I'm going to hit control B. We get the bounce cells in place dialog window, my good friends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the source, meaning the region that is in key focus, and then from there I'm going to bounce second loop pass. You might have remembered what happens. And uh, I'm not going to normalize it. I, this is a healthy signal. The only time you're ever going to want to normalize, in my opinion, and I'm sure there's more thoughts out there, but if you have a quiet signal, right, uh, or you want something to be extremely loud, but generally speaking, if the incoming signal is really low, this is a really nice way to kind of level everything out. And so um, everything looks good to me. I'm just going to hit uh, bounce cell in place all right here we go so it didn't render that one but it's going to render this one as you can see all right so we should be able to listen to this now with the effect i'll play it in isolation and then of course we'll play it with the track well i'm not hearing anything Is it... hmm. hold on Wait a minute. <laughs> Let's try that again. I think that was. I'm not sure why that didn't work, to be honest. All right. Let's see. Control M right here. Let me play it again just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right. Yes, we got the point. Control B. Good. Second bounce. Uh, test. Here we go. All right. It's going to start burning now. All right, let's listen to the end result. All right, so keep looking. So it's playing all these wild effects. And now when it goes back to its rotation, listen to this. Okay, so it's interesting because it literally, yeah, I, I want to look at what it does. Let's double click on the region. I, I want to see the physiology here. So it bounced that first section and then it just loops from here, right? So when we listen to this in its totality, let's bring this all the way out. I want to hear just this. Let's go. Okay, cool. And then, of course, if you wanted to change the position, you could just drag this to the right. Uh, I believe like that. Hold on. Why isn't that moving over? I guess. Oh, you know what? Let's use some of the stuff we learned earlier. I will control click right here and I will step set loop start right here. Okay, this looks a little bit better. Let's listen to this. All right, so hence we're capturing all the reverb. Let's try this again on a much clearer example. I know that sound was not the right sound. Um, in fact, let me just go back to this and just put just like a, a nice sweet delay or something like that. Uh, boom, let's go to delays. How about just something simple? No, I don't want infinity arp. Okay, let's give it a go and we'll see what this sounds like. Yes, perfect. Okay, so this is going to be really good because theoretically we should be able to hear that in that silence or the initial silence, the delay carrying over. Let's see if this actually works. So there's that 
setting, bounce, second, loop, pass. I'll hit OK. Okay. Before I play, I want to look at the cell inspector and just kind of analyze some of the numbers and figures. See, what's confusing me is, is it is silent here, but the, the playback allows me to see something different. Right? The cell length is eight bars. So look at the design here. Look at the engineering here. They realize that there is silence at the beginning. So what they're going to do is create a loop where I get the reverb at the end of the tail. Let me show you what I mean. Let me play this out. So it's silent here. All right, reverb. And reverb, right? And so now we, in effect, get that healthy signal that appears to be one continuous loop, but really we can see that by use of the cell editor, we're able to play with the loop start and the loop end, and this allows us the opportunity to create and work with this incredible technology. Very good, my friends. As stated, when I see you guys next time, we are recording a live loop performance inside of Logic Pro. So beware, Eddie Gray is performing next time around. Uh, there are issues sometimes with Zoom, so I'll probably have a you know, guitar, uh, but if that doesn't work out, then I'll just get like, you know, I'll get the, uh, the cowbell out. Uh, on top of that, we're gonna change the live loops view settings. We've actually already done some of this, but maybe there's some new stuff for us to check out. Uh, what else? We're going to be talking about uh, navigation, so zooming, zooming cells horizontally by means of the uh, slider bars, changing the size of the live loops grid. Didn't know that you could do that, did you? Really cool. And then, of course, how to assign an actual controller. So if you're interested in all that, as always, stay tuned. We are resources for the modern creative, and this is all brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. So if you want to check us out, Go ahead. This is Eddie Gray signing off. Thank you very much for the opportunity to learn and grow with you and to serve. I am a student first of the game, always. I'm signing off. Thank you very much.